<laughs> Hi, I'm Craig Nishina. And I'm Mike Jambalvo. And we're Google developers from the CL office and also Angular Seattle meetup organizers and contributing authors to the book Testing Angular Applications. Way back in the day in 2016, we worked on the Protractor team. And although we're currently not working on it right now, uh, actively working on it, we're still interested in the project. And today, we'd like to share with you three tips on screenshot testing, a new way to write Protractor tests, and debugging Protractor tests with Chrome DevTools. We knew we wanted to do a Star Wars themed talk. So we were thinking of ways to relate Star Wars to uh, testing. And what we came up with is this kind of idea that testing is kind of like the force in that it has two sides, a light side and a dark side. You can think of the light side as unit testing. So it's white box testing, it's, uh, it has full isolation, it's, it's very predictable, um, very reliable and elegant, but it also requires discipline and practice to master. When you think of end-to-end -end testing, you think of the dark side of the force. They're very powerful and can be easy, an easy shortcut to get quick results. And it's very tempting to abuse, and you could end up with many tests. Just like the force, you want to have balance in your testing. And we recommend achieving this balance by having many uh, light unit tests and just a few heavy end-to-end -end tests, mostly to test the, uh, the happy paths through your application or the critical paths that you can't test any other way. <laughs> but today's talk is not about the light side. We don't have enough time. It's about the dark side. So it's Protractor web driver tests, and we took some of the best practices in, over the last year and put them in a new node module we're calling Blue Harvest. Blue Harvest. It's like a refreshing swig of blue milk. So everything you see in the demos today, you'll be able to do on your own by downloading this NPM. Uh, I also recommend, if you're interested in these techniques, to look at the NPM, look at the source, look at how we did it. It's actually not that hard for you to implement these techniques on your own. So it's time for the demo. Good. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking at our Angular admin interface for the Death Star. And as you can see, there's three main tabs. We have the tractor beam control panel. Uh, there's the prisoner manifest behind and uh, auth guard. And we also have the firing form so we can fire the Death Star. First, we're going to show you how to, take, how to write tests that take screenshots and then fail if the appearance of your application changes. These are great because they can catch uh, things that unit tests might miss, so regressions in your CSS or changes to your assets. But they can also be a pain to maintain. They change any time the appearance of your application changes, whether or not that's a bug. And that just means it's important that you have an easy way to update your reference images if they need to change. So now let's take a look at uh, the two, uh, a screenshot test. So in the first example on the left is the golden image or the reference image. And this is what we expect the, uh, the page to look like. And when the test runs, it takes a screenshot of the page. And as you can see on the image on the right, it looks like there's something going wrong with that formatting. Right, is this the kind of thing we might have caught with a unit test? Um, probably not. It looks like you know the image looks right. And there's just something going on with that you know, the, the formatting. I think this might be better for a screenshot test. So as the screenshot runs uh, and it fails, we get the stiff image. And the stiff image shows the differences between the actual screenshot that we had and the golden image, and it's highlighted in pink. And it's easy to see whether or not this is an acceptable result or output. So as, as we can see, this is not. Um, and it's also important to note that if you're gonna do a screenshot test of any type, you should always make sure your width and height of your window is set before. And then you just use the, our Blue Harvest Con Compare Screenshot API, and we get the result and check to see if it's truthy or not. And that's it. Screenshot tests will fail any time the appearance of your application changes, even if that change isn't a regression. So in this case, we uh, have a change that's not a regression. We just made the text bigger and easier to read. We, uh, we don't we want to update the reference image instead of having this test fail. We can see from the diff exactly what the problem was quickly. And so in order to update our reference images, we set the update golden's environment variable to true and rerun our tests. Blue Harvest will check that environment variable and then it'll run through your test doing screenshot comparisons. But instead of failing when the screenshots are different, it'll just update the reference image. So you can update all your reference images just with one command. So sometimes there are parts of your page you wish to ignore. 
in this example, uh, new example, Obi-Wan is actually moving, and it's an animated image of, of him moving the lever. So this might make screenshot testing really difficult. The way we can uh, avoid that is if we just add a mask. So we use Blue Harvest to just add a mask, and the way we do that is we find, use an element finder in Protractor, and we say, like, look for that image lever, lever, and then set it to gray. And then when we do this, we have to make sure we update our golden images, and then we can then run our test and it should pass. You might be wondering, how well does this actually work in practice? Well, we've been doing testing like this at Google for a while now. We have thousands of these kinds of tests. We don't use Blue Harvest. We use another tool, um, but it does a similar thing. It makes it very easy for us to update our reference images. One thing we do is we keep our goldens in our source repo. This makes it very easy to track which version of your application produced which version of your reference screenshots and to track them over time. We recommend doing that as well. Uh, one fun thing about this testing, as you might have heard, Angular Material runs every commit through Google's internal uh, CI before they do a release. And our internal CI has many applications that depend on Material, and those applications have screenshot tests. So we've actually caught bugs in Angular Material before they released by ha because they broke the screenshot test for applications that depend on Material. And finally, these tests do fail if you update Chrome sometimes. Uh, sometimes the Chrome team will change how shadows render, and you'll get these little one pixel differences. It's very obvious from the diff image that it wasn't a material change, it wasn't a significant change. Um, you just update the reference image and get on with your life. It's not a big deal. Next, we'd like to show you a new API for writing end-to-end -end tests with Protractor that we call Action Helpers. Uh, we've been using this API internally for a while now, and it's become pretty popular, so we're happy to share it with you today. We're going to use Action Helpers to write an end-to-end -end test for the form that you have to fill out before you can fire the Death Star. As, you're, as, uh, as I'm sure you know, the, the Empire is notoriously bureaucratic, um, so before anyone can fire the Death Star, you must fill out the form, or, you know, or else force choke code. Yeah. So we need an authorizing officer, and we also need a command code, and the command code must have the word gold in it, and then we can fire the Death Star. So in the past, we recommended that you write integration tests is with page objects. A page object provides a higher level API wrapping the page that you'd like to test. And the idea is that instead of having CSS selectors and whatnot in your test, um, you have this object and the CSS selectors live there. And your test just says set system, set orbit, uh, get status and then fire. And part of the reason for this is that it's supposed to make your test easier to maintain. If the CSS of your application changes, you only have to update one thing, the page object, and your test will just continue to run as normal. So this is the best practice. In order to write this test today, the first thing we need to do is create a page object. Michael, this is going to write a page object right now? During our test? During our presentation? I got a really, really bad feeling about this. So you're not the only one. Uh, there's a, a team within Google, the Warsaw team, uh, that works on GCP. They also had a bad feeling about writing page objects. What they found was it just slowed them down. Uh, so you have to find the right combination of CSS selectors. So what you're doing is you've got your application open, you've got dev tools open, you're like digging around looking for the right magic selector you need for your test. Um, and they just found that really slowed them down and made tests difficult to write. They also found that page objects weren't that useful from a maintenance perspective because anytime the CSS of their page changed, and it changes a lot because GCP updates pretty often, uh, the workflow is changing anyway. So it was actually not the case that they could just update their page objects and their test would continue to run because the functionality had changed. And so their tests needed to be updated as well. The Warsaw team isn't shy about solving problems on their own. So they came up with a library that we're, we're calling Action Helpers. The idea behind Action Helpers is to make your tests as easy to write as possible. And you focus only on what you can see on the page. So Action Helpers use text-based selectors. Instead of selecting by CSS elements, you say, well, I would see orbit here, so I need to click that. Or I see add an officer for this button, so I need to click that. Or fire. So they're very easy to write. It's a much simpler API. There's, there's just sort of less typing overall. Uh, this is actually pretty well, because tests are so easy to write, they're also, the, there's less of a maintenance problem. Basically, if your workflow changes, you can throw away the test and rewrite a new one pretty quickly. In fact, much faster than you could update a page object. And one of the big advantages of, the, of this is that the tests read conversationally. Uh, when you read the test, it's almost as if it's saying what you would say if you were just telling someone, 
how to do the same test. So it's very easy to understand immediately what's going on. Okay, so here's the firing form from earlier. Uh, we're gonna write an unit, uh, we're gonna write an end-to-end -end test on this. And throughout this demo, we're gonna use the highlight delay flag for protractor, and this will help us to see when the test runs, what's actually being selected. So first, we are clicking on this orbit and system, and to do that, we need to click on the input element, elements by their placeholder text and type in some data. So it looks like we're destroying Alderaan? Yep, that's what happens in the movie. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um, and then we need to click on the button, add an officer. Oh. And we have this really, that's not it, okay. And then we're gonna click on the name. We're gonna type in Tarkin. Admiral Tarkin. Oh, yes. And we're gonna type in the command code and we're gonna type in something with the word gold in it. Gold one. Now we're gonna type in right of gold one. And we're gonna see that check circle. Michael, do you wanna talk about that? So this is how you write assertions and action helpers. Um, if you have a lot of text on your page, that might match the same elements, you can disambiguate it with positional locators. And there's a rich library of positional locators. You can say left, right, under, uh, below, above. In this case, what I'm saying is, when this is valid, this icon is supposed to change to a check circle. So I'm looking for the text that I just typed, gold one, and then to the right of it, I'm expecting to see an element with the text check circle. Because I'm using material icons, what I'm actually looking for is the name of the icon. So I can just type that here. Um, it's also good to note that you don't have to use text. You can just put CSS selectors in here and that works too. Okay, so next we're gonna click on fire. And then we're gonna click on, we're gonna see that it's destroyed. And we have a slow in front of there because probably before we used to use browser wait and expected conditions and you wait to see that the text is destroyed. But now we just need slow. So in Action Helpers, the C is your assertion. That's what you type instead of expect. And it will fail if it doesn't see what's on the page. I put slow in front of it as a signal that I expect this to happen for a while. Uh, the Death Star takes a while to charge up, so I'm saying that I'm going to see destroyed eventually, and I want you to retry and wait for it to appear. So okay, let's go ahead and run this test. It's gonna be kind of small um, because it won't be scaled. And what you're seeing right now is highlight delay clicking in. So the elements I'm about to interact with are highlighted in blue first. And there's a slight pause, so it's easy for me to follow along with what's happening in the test. It looks like that console log is very readable and almost reproducible. And, nope. uh-oh. Hello. Oh, no. Did you, good one. Let's try that again. Technical difficulties sometimes happens. We typed in system. Cool. This might not work on the on the screen actually. It might be it. Okay, we click the fire button and Alderon is destroyed. The test passes. You're monstrous for applauding that. <laughs> <laughs> so it works, it's, it was a pretty complex form and we wrote the test pretty easily. And it looks like we could probably just throw away that t text information or we could get the console log and be able to reproduce it. Right, and so this is important. You might have seen uh, during our, while we were running our test, this logging output. Because the API is so simple, a log that describes what it's doing is actually identical to the API. Uh, you couldn't just like copy and paste this but you can read it and see exactly what's happening. I'm going to the firing page, I'm clicking on system, I type in Alderaan, so on and so forth. It's very easy to read this log and know exactly what the test did. Once again, you might ask, how well does this work? Uh, well, within Google, we have hundreds of these tests in GCP, and this has in fact become our preferred way to write tests. We've uh, found that even in a product that evolves as rapidly as GCP, Selecting, finding elements by text works pretty well. The, uh, the text is actually more stable, if that makes sense, than the CSS, right? Because CSS is an implementation detail, and the text is what the user sees. So if the text of a button changes, probably means that button does something different. 
but the CSS of a button can change without changing its actual behavior. And it, once again, yeah, GCP rapidly evolves, and th this has worked pretty well for it. Uh, also, depending on the appearance of the page is a benefit and not a weakness. Um, if your CSS is messed up and something that's supposed to be to the right of something else isn't, that you want to catch that. You want your test to fail. So positional selectors are actually not as much of a problem as we thought we would be. So finally, we'd like to show you our last example, which is writing a uh, being able to debug your tests. So debugging protractor tests in the past used to be a pain with WebDriver control flow. And uh, if you upgrade to the latest protractor, you will be able to not use the control flow and be able to debug with Chrome DevTools. What is the control flow? Uh, so you might have heard about this. Unfortunately, it's an implementation detail of WebDriver that you had to be aware of, but that's not going to be true for much longer. So the important thing to keep in mind is that browser commands in an integration test are async actions. What's happening is your test is sending an HTTP call to a process that's controlling the browser. It used to be the case that writing a big chain of asynchronous act actions was very difficult in JavaScript. So the Selenium uh, WebDriver JS people, they came up with this clever idea. They made their API synchronous. Instead of sending the command, every time you use a, enter a command, a browser command in their API, it queues it up in something called the control flow that runs later. Then in a single async call, all of the keto commands run and your test runs. So this is great because it makes your test easier to read and easier to write, but it, makes, it breaks debugging, right? And we're gonna show you how that happens in the next slides. So let's take a look at a protractor test. Uh, the first thing that happens is we start adding these web driver promises to the control flow queue. And we hit the debugger point. And at this point, we might have launched the browser window. We might have navigated to it, but we haven't actually inputted any of the text fields yet. So if we keep stepping over, we keep queuing up to the control flow. And what happens at the end is Protractor patches the it block, and then now it starts executing the control flow. So right at this point, it starts typing in Protractor into the, our uh, title block. Now, without the control flow, and we get the debugger point, uh, actually this works because we've navigated to the page, uh, we've filled out our form for Protractor, A New Hope. The control flow is going away in Selenium 4. Just like Luke's hand is gonna be chopped off and dropped down a garbage disposal. Uh, but this isn't a problem. You're gonna get a shiny new hand, and that hand is async await. And uh, so before you can update to Selenium 4, you're going to have to update all of your tests to be asynchronous. You're gonna have to make your it blocks async, and you're gonna have to put a wait in front of every command as we showed in the slides. But the advantage of that is now your test will be able to be debugged with standard Node.js tools. So before you can do that, uh, some things to keep in mind. First, in your Protractor config, you need to set Selenium Promise Manager to false. This is how you tell Protractor to run WebDriver without the control flow. Uh, in Selenium 4, there won't be a control flow, so that'll just be the default, but this is how you try it out early. Also, while you're debugging your test, you might be inspecting something or just like staring at it and thinking. Uh, so you don't want your test to time out and fail. So if you're debugging, we recommend having a Jasmine no timeout that's very high, just so your tests don't time out. Finally, in your TS config uh, for your end-to-end -end tests, you want to emit ES2017, because if you emit an earlier version of JavaScript, TypeScript will polyfill all the async await logic for you, and then you'll be stepping through your test, and you'll get into this generated async await code, and you'll be sad. So don't be sad, emit ES2017. So Michael, ES2017, don't we need Node 8? Yes, this means you're, you'll have to be using Protractor, you'll be running your tests on Node 8. Uh, but Node 8 is the LTS, so that's fine. Finally, we're gonna show in our demo debugging with VS Code, uh, but you can also debug just with Chrome. So you would launch Protractor like this, uh, you would call Node directly and pass it the inspect break flag. This tell, the inspect part tells Node that you're debugging, and the break part tells it to set a breakpoint right when it launches. And then you just call the Protractor script. Uh, if you open up Chrome, colon slash slash inspect, Chrome will see the new debugging target available. You'll just be able to click a link and then open DevTools. All right, so uh, in our repo, I've got the VS Code config to launch Protractor in debugging mode. So I'm just gonna kick that off now. You can see the first thing we do is we hit this breakpoint on launch, but in my test, I have a debugger uh, statement written that we'll get to and we'll break. So we launch the browser, and now we're at our debugger statement. I can step through, and all the browser commands run, right? I load my login page, I see that I type in stuff, continue to go on, 
Um, I say that I'm not a droid, and then I click the login button. And now I'm on my new page. Also, I can open up in the browser under test. I can open up Chrome DevTools, and I can just type ng pro. I'm interacting with my application, so I can do anything that I could do normally in DevTools. So if you want to stop here and inspect stuff or look around, you can do that. You can go back to your test, you can continue to step. And the test is done. So actually, there was something sneaky that just happened. The Chrome DevTools did not close down. This used to happen a lot when you run through Protractor. Yeah, that's true. So the uh, Chrome exposes an API that is what WebDriver uses to control the browser. It's also what DevTools uses to control the browser. So in previous versions of Chrome, they would fight over each other. And if you tried to open the debugger during a Protractor test, it would close every time a new command came in. They fixed that. That's no longer the case, uh, which is really exciting because it means there's other tools you can build off of that same API that can also run during integration tests. So just know that you can debug your website and also be debugging your protractor tests at the same time. You have two dev tools open, and it's not a problem. OK, so that was our final demo. Um, like we said earlier, we are con contributing authors to the book, Manning book, Testing Angular Applications. Uh, we cover some of these examples in further detail, so please check it out. It is 40% off with that discount code. Um, and some final takeaways. Uh, the control flow is going away, so if you, uh, if you want to migrate your test, now's the time. Um, if you'd like to check out our demo app and test that we use today, please check out our GitHub link. Uh, if you'd like to check out screenshot testing or, uh, or action helpers, please check out Blue Harvest. We'd like to hear some feedback. And uh, thanks to Benjamin Bremes for our Star Wars kazoo cover at the beginning of the slides. And special thanks to Bullock from the GCP Warsaw team, or Bolu on GitHub, for the initial implementation of Action Helpers. All right, that's all we've got. Thank, Thank you. you.